So this uh, question was about airway surgery. <coughs> uh, question was what are the general considerations in case of anesthesia for airway surgery? And what are the various uh, ventilatory strategies for airway surgery? The first consideration uh, should be about the lesion. We need to know where the location is. What is the size of the lesion? Uh, what is the extent? and how mobile is a lesion and how is this lesion affecting the laryngeal function and the airway potency it's also important to know uh, what the previous anesthetic and surgical findings are and uh, this sometimes the tumors grow very rapidly and uh, the patient might undergone a radiotherapy which can change the size of tumor appearance and mobility we also need to look at the images, especially CT scans, and uh, these will give it the idea about the upper and the lower limits of the lesion and how they're affecting the uh, larynx or the trachea or the upper airway. And most importantly, it's important that a nasal endoscopy is done either the night before or in the morning of the surgery because that gives the warning about their appearance of the tumor. If you look at the patients, uh, the patients are usually in, mainly into two categories. Uh, the first category, uh, category of patient is the elderly patient. And these patients uh, usually have a coexisting respiratory and cardiovascular uh, morbidity. And this is usually related to their history of smoking and high alcohol intake. These uh, patients usually have malignant lesions and uh, they may show side effects of the treatment that is radiotherapy or chemotherapy. And because they have this uh, coexisting cardiovascular uh, morbidities uh, and respiratory uh, morbidities, they often require intraoperative uh, invasive monitoring. They may also require special anesthesia technique where you would want the patient to wake up a lot more quickly. So using uh, anesthetic agents like Desflurane and short-acting opiates like Remifentanil. The second category of patients are usually young patients. They either might have a conjunctal uh, condition or an infective lesion. And then there is another category of patients uh, who are young, may have learning difficulties, and might have inhaled or ingested foreign bodies. But what is common to both these uh, patients is the uh, psychological factors. Uh, these patients have a fear of choking and death and inability to communicate uh, following tracheostomy. Because all the patients who have airway surgery are often likely constant for tracheostomy, so that's important. And many of these patients will come back for multiple procedures. The other consideration is the anesthesia itself, where we are going to share the airway. The surgeon is operating uh, near the head and neck, and so we need to protect the eyes, the neck and teeth uh, from our enemies, the surgeon. At the same time, we need to provide a optimal surgical access uh, in an area which is crowded by our endotracheal tube and the uh, equipment which is going to go into the mouth. So uh, as we see in this picture, it's a pretty crowded place and look at the neck uh, position of the patient as uh, the way uh, the scope is going to the mouth and uh, so there can be injuries to the teeth, uh, to the mouth, uh, to the eyes. And it is a shared airway. That's the main important thing. <clears throat> Talking about the ventilatory strategies, there are, there are multiple strategies. Uh, we can either use spontaneous ventilation uh, with just topical anesthesia, with or without sedation. Advantage is, is that the patient is in control of their own airways. Disadvantage, very few procedures uh, can be done. And not many patients will tolerate uh, this procedure. The other is uh, using spontaneous respiration with general anesthesia. This is often done in pediatric patient uh, using a ventilating bronchoscope uh, uh, like the STARS bronchoscopes. And this uh, shows the ventilating bronchoscope. So that's a bronchoscope. It's got a diaphragm through which you can put the scope. We can put the biopsy uh, material, the, sorry, the, the things to bi uh, do the biopsy uh, 
forceps and, and you can attach a normal uh, breathing circuit uh, to it. The other uh, way is to do intermittent positive pressure ventilation like we are used to, but in this case, instead of using a normal standard tube, you use a micro linear tube, which is a smaller in size, usually 5.5 to 6 centimeters, but the anesthesia equipment required is a standard equipment. Disadvantage here is often reduce access to surgical field, and the trickle tube can obscure the posterior one third of the glottis. And other disadvantage is that the operative field can be relatively mobile and moves with respiration. So the other ventilatory strategies used are the low frequency jet ventilation. In this case, uh, the high pressure gas is delivered through a narrow, a narrow cannula, uh, which can be attached to the suspension laryngoscope or bron bronchoscope. And the gas is delivered using a hand-operated uh, switch uh, at a rate of 10 to 20 breaths per minute. So this uh, high velocity gas uh, tends to entrain air, increasing the total volume generated, but at the same time diminishes the oxygen concentration of inspired gases. Advantage here is that the operating field is immobile for short period of times when you're not uh, ventilating. It's pretty easy to perform. It requires uncomplicated uh, anesthesia equipment. And it does produce an unobstructed view for the surgeon. There are no tubes to obs obscure the uh, vision. So this is a uh, suspension uh, bronchoscope or laryngoscope, sorry. And you can see the tube, jet, jetting tube attached uh, to it. And these are uh, different kind of attachments uh, for the uh, suspension uh, laryngoscopes. Uh, you have a nipple or you have a straight connector or you have a jet connector. Uh, this is uh, a showing a another, uh, the uh, ventilating, it's not a ventilating, this is, this is a suspension laryngoscope that is attached to a jet uh, ventilation device. <clears throat> there are though uh, many disadvantages of using uh, low frequency jet ventilation. Uh, there is always a risk of barotrauma because we are using a high pressure gas system. And this is especially uh, true if the uh, jet is below the larynx. And it's very important that the upper airway always remain patent for expiration to occur passively. Adequacy of ventilation cannot be assessed. They cannot uh, monitor entitled CO2. And we cannot deliver inhale anesthetic. So we need to use uh, total intravenous anesthesia. And because we need to use total intravenous anesthesia, we should actually have uh, some kind of a uh, monitoring for preventing awareness, depth of anesthesia monitor. And the surgical field is often uh, mobile because of the jet ventilation. The uh, eddy currents that are created uh, moves the field. Uh, so there's only an uh, interspersed time where the whole field is immobile. And if the suspension laryngoscopes are not properly aligned, uh, they can actually, uh, gases can go into the tummy and cause gastric insufflation. The other ventilatory strategy is uh, using high frequency jet ventilation. And this is uh, again can be done through a narrow cannula attached to suspension laryngoscope, or you can use a long catheter placed subglottically or via crocothyroid uh, puncture. Onset and offset of inspiration are controlled by a high frequency flow interrupter, which can be pneumatically driven or electronically controlled. And again, just like low frequency ventilation, air can still be untrained. And uh, the generated tidal volumes are much smaller than the conventional ventilation. Advantage of the high frequency jet ventilation is that you can alter the inspired uh, oxygen concentration in the FiO2. Uh, you can control the driving pressure of the gas, the frequency of ventilation, which you can set between 60 to 600 breaths per minute. And you can actually also choose the inspired time. We usually tend to use around 30% of the cycle. So that's a commercially available uh, high frequency jet ventilation where you can uh, control the various parameters. 
So the greatest advantage of the high frequency ventilation is we get improved view of the immobile operative field. And disadvantage is, is that we still need total intermittent anesthesia, which might require a complex equipment. And obviously the equipment required to deliver from the high frequency ventilation is also a very costly equipment. Here again, we cannot monitor the carbon dioxide concentration, so entire CO2 is not available to us. Airway is not protected uh, with a cuff tube. Yeah, there's always risk of barotrauma. And the other thing is the gases tend to cool, cool down and dry the airway. There are newer ventilators now available which will actually give you warm humidified gases. Uh, but the normal ones, they tend to cause cooling and dryness. Uh, thank you and best wishes.